friends! Welcome to episode 8 of Gemma Darling Daily. I'm your host Danielle, also known as Gemma Darling, and you guys can call me Danny because that's what people have been calling me since birth and it's weird when someone says Danielle. <laughs> Though I like it, I've, I've kind of grown to like it as I've gotten older, but I've always been Danny, so I'm Danny. That was a lot of information. Anyway, um, guys, I am kind of podcasting on a schedule now. This is probably not going to last, but I just thought I would give myself a little bit of a pat on the back for doing this within two weeks of the last podcast. Um, I don't actually know if it's within two weeks, but I think it is, so let's go with it. <laughs> it's making me feel good about myself. I just got back from LA. My One of my best friends got married, and I went out there on a Thursday and came back on Saturday, and Andy met me there on Friday and came back on Saturday. So it was this really, really super quick trip. Um, we were in Long Beach. We all went down there to this place called the Ebel Club, E-B-E-L-L, -L, I think. Um, it was gorgeous. If you guys live in California and you're looking for an event space, I cannot recommend this place more. The food was really good. I mean, I had, I think it was prime rib that just was like falling apart. It was delicious. Um, <laughs> usually at weddings, I kind of eat my face off and I didn't really do that at this wedding. So by the time I got my dinner, I was like, <laughs> you know how you feel like sometimes at weddings you're like, eh, this is okay. This was good. Anyway. All right, let me get to my show notes. That was just a little bit of a tangent in the intro. Um, also, I'd like to thank Vanessa Reyes, my fiber friend, for my birthday gift. She sent me a Harry Potter uh, Alex and Ani bracelet, and I love it. And I don't really wear bracelets too much, but this bracelet I totally love because, of course, it's the Deathly Hallows. And um, what else does I have on it? It has some other stuff on it, but I don't have my glasses on, so I can't read it. But anyway, you know. The Deathly Hallows. The Stone, the Wand, and the Invisibility Cloak. Really? Right now? Okay. Anyway. Um, I really should turn that off. Is it rude? Yeah. I just, you know, I'm a, I'm a mom, so I need to be reached at all times in case something is going on. And so, sorry, my phone dings. Anyway, I have some show notes, so we're going to try to do this in a an orderly fashion where it actually makes sense and I'm not out of breath rambling and bambling. But you know what? Right now, I think that's what I'm doing. So, I'm going to find my zen and let's do this. Okay, let's talk about this LYS Unity Cal. Now, um, Christina and Miriam from Chelsea Yarns, we were all talking and we wanted to host a Cal so that we could all, you know, enjoy this road to Ryan back. And we had just all mentioned that we wanted to knit the Tecumseh. So we decided to do a Cal. And then Not House Yarns joined in because they were up at Chelsea Yarns doing a podcast. If you guys didn't see that podcast together, you have to watch it. They're hysterical together. Um, and I think it's really, really wonderful when local yarn stores come together to produce something wonderful for the community. They all carry something different. We all fall in love with different things at different stores. And so I think unifying the idea of unity amongst local yarn stores is really a wonderful thing. So Christina and I were talking and we decided um, that we wanted to host this cal. It's an extremely loose knit along, guys. If you're knitting Tecumseh or any sort of Rhinebeck sweater, I mean, I, I think we were gonna do Tecumseh at the beginning, but I don't wanna exclude anyone. So if you're knitting your Rhinebeck sweater and you haven't split for the sleeves yet, I mean, no need to cast on with us exactly, but if you have not split for the sleeves, I feel like you're still going to be knitting the bulk of the sweater along with us. So you're welcome to join us. Um, a lot of local yarn stores have joined in. I have the list right here. Let's see, it's Chelsea Yarns, Knot House Yarns, The Wool Workshop, which you know is our girl, Skein Cocaine. She asked to join and we welcome you. Um, the Knitting Place, Dinah from The Knitting Place is one of my favorite people. I met her in Edinburgh and I, I'm really just happy to call her my friend. She joined in. Um, and also Black Mountain Yarn Shop. And so I'd like you to look up all of these places online, follow them on Instagram. They are wonderful yarn shops, local yarn stores. And if you're ever on a tour and you just wanna hit some local yarn stores, make sure you hit these yarn stores. Um, I myself have not been to Knothouse Yarns, The Wool Workshop, or Black Mountain Yarn Shop, but they are on my LYS 
tour bucket list and I'm going to hit them at some point because well I'm really excited to go visit Skein Cocaine. We have to set a date because she and I have something cooked up that we really want to do which we just think would be funny um, which will probably get kicked off YouTube for um, copyright infringement but we'll try it anyway or maybe we'll just do it as an Instagram live but I'm not going to tell you anymore. Um, also, we have some indie dyers that have joined in. Um, nice and Knit. You guys know I talk about Nice and Knit all the time. That's my Millie sweater. Um, Machete Shop, my girl Brittany from Pennsylvania. She just rebranded. She has such great stuff um, up in the up in her shop right now. We'll talk about that in a little while. And also Hooker's Corner, um, Kathy, who I, I, I just adore her. She's hysterical. She sends me all these videos instead of texting me. And I just think it's great because then I feel like I'm talking to her, which Kathy, we should just FaceTime once in a while. <laughs> um, and we also have a pledged prize from Espas Tree Co. Now, I don't know if they are actually going to host the cow with us. I have to talk to Melissa and Lisa, but I believe that they have pledged a prize. So I am putting them in our list. Now, if you buy your yarn for this knit along for, from any of these brands, any of the stores or any of the yarn shops, um, you get an extra entry at the end for a prize. And so all of these brands that have joined in are pledging a prize at the end. So that is, so far it's nine. I'm gonna put one in so that's 10. So far we're gonna have 10 drawings for prizes. And if any other local yarn stores, indie dyers, or if you make like swag, like pin swag, or anything that has to do with the knitting community and you wanna join into this LYS Unity Cal, please contact myself or Chelsea Yarns, Christina. Um, we're kind of heading it up um, and, and just contact us and we'll put you on the list. Now there is a list in my Ravelry group, Gemma Darling Daily, and a couple of you have told me that you're having trouble finding my page, so I just wanna ask you guys to try it as all one word. Um, I like to write it for some reason as all one word, Gemma Darling Daily and then podcast. And um, I don't know why I do that, but try it. And if you can't find it, please let me know. I know that Christina has some of the rules in her um, thread for Chelsea Yarns. And I also have the rules in my thread under Gemma Darling Daily. Um, there are three headers. One is a list if you'd like to consult where you can buy yarns to um, have an extra entry and one of them is for um, if you'd like to check in as a host if you again are part of the knitting community in terms of someone who creates something and sells it you're welcome to become a host and then buying from you will qual qualify um, everyone for whoever knits with your yarn will qualify or even if they use a stitch marker from you anything that they buy from you will qualify them for an extra entry at the end. So you get one for finishing your sweater and you get one for if you bought your yarn or your swag from one of the hosts. So then you would have two chances. And I will explain to you later in the game at the end of the cal, which will end one week after Rhineback. It ends after Rhineback. Um, we're going to do the drawing then and I will explain to you how you actually enter the drawing because it will be your responsibility to enter the drawing. And the third uh, thread that I have on, in my Ravelry group is for you all. If you're knitting along with us, let us know. We want to know and we want to see what yarns you're using and what colors you've put together. And if you're not knitting the Tecumseh, let us know what sweater you are going to knit. Um, it has to be a garment. Choose any sweater or cardigan that makes you happy and knit along with us. Anyway, if you're going to join our Cal, I'd really love to hear from you because I want to see, you know, if it's, if it's, we're trying to spread the word. So if you're a host, spread the word. And um, I know that Hooker's Corner put up some Tecumseh kits in her shop and so did um, Machete Shop did a pre-order for them, which I don't think is still up. But if you like any of her colorways, I'm sure she will put a kit together for you. And Nice and Knit is on vacation right now. And I am looking at them vicariously on Instagram and trying to live through them because they have such a wonderful band, like a, a, a family, and they're all like going to these really amazing places together and taking pictures of the kids all together. And so as soon as they get back from vacation, we're going to talk to them about what they would like to do regarding this knit along. So 
that's the info for now. If you have any questions, DM me in, on Instagram or in Ravelry, and I will happily answer your questions. Um, I do forget to respond to people sometimes, so if I forget to respond to you, talk to me again. Okay? Thanks. <laughs> okay, you guys want to see my Tecumseh? Um, let's see. There are some things I want to talk about with this pattern. I am loving it. It's going super fast, and you guys know I don't have a lot of time to knit, um, but the other day I started watching Z is for Zelda, which is an Amazon um, original. I think it was one of the first Amazon originals, and it's with Christina Ritchie, and it's the life of um, F. Scott Fitzgerald and Zelda Fitzgerald, and um, it kind of starts, you know, when they meet and how he sells his first book, and I just love the Gilded Age and the flappers and the 20s. That's why I got my ring from 1920. Um, and how women were fighting for, you know, their right to vote, all the suffragists. And it was just, it was a turbulent time, of course, because that's what things were like back then. But it was also, you know, they found a way to have fun um, with a little bit of glamour. So it was the Gilded Age. And I really like reading his stories or her stories, because, you know, it is rumored that she wrote the books. But... Um, whatever the case, I'm really enjoying watching that. And so the other day I just started binge watching it. And what's nice is I think each episode is like 22 minutes or 27 minutes. So it's not like you're committing for an hour, which is really nice. Um, but this is my Tecumseh right now. Okay. And I think I'm at the hardest part right now. And by hard, I just mean it's tedious. I have 360 stitches, I think, in one round. And, um... Because this is the part that's going to be on my arm before I start the sleeves. So this is the longest color work section in the entire sweater. So I'm halfway through the shields down here, or, or whatever people are calling them. Um, if they're feathers or leaves, I'm not sure. You'll have to ask Caitlin herself. But I was calling them shields because I just thought that that was the shape that they are. They're shields to me. <laughs> so... That's where I am, and as soon as I'm done with the shields, then I will be splitting for the sleeves and taking some stitches over here and some stitches over here and putting them on something else. And then um, I think knitting in the round down here won't be so bad. And I have one more repeat and then a repeat on each arm. So this is a really, really quick knit. Um, with that being said, I would like to talk about something that I, I saw last night, I was catching up with Legacy Fiber Arts, and I love my girls. They are phenomenal knitters. Phenomenal. I mean, Sue is just a pro, and Chelsea just picked it up like that. And I've been watching them since the beginning. So, you know, really watching her mature as a knitter is a lot of fun for me. Um, she just, she's a wizard. <laughs> like, there's really no other way to say it. They pick beautiful colors, and I actually don't have any of their yarn, so I'm looking forward to getting some. Um... I am loving this sweater, guys. I'm loving it. And, you know, I'm sure the pattern is not for everyone, but if you don't like the color work on this, knit it without the color work because the structure of this sweater is wonderful. With that being said, I want to talk about the short rows that you encounter on the back. Now, at the beginning of the pattern, it's in the round, and if you want to put short rows in, they're optional. And they will just raise it a little bit in the back so that when you put it on, you have just maybe like an inch or two from here to here. So it's a little bit higher in the back of your neck than it is in the front because it is a band that stretches and it's kind of goes into more of a boat neck mode. So you don't really want to feel like it's falling off you in the back. So putting the short rows in, it's like four rows, guys. So when you hear short rows, I know sometimes people don't want to knit patterns that have short rows. It's four rows. It takes about, if you're a good knitter, a half an hour, not even like 15 minutes. Just knit the short rows, okay? Um, if you want to leave them out, if you're not a good at short rows, go ahead, you know, do what you're comfortable with. But the pattern, um, when I first tried the short rows, I thought something was wrong because I was only getting them over here. I was going from the beginning around, I was knitting, and then I was going back and doing the wrap and turn here and coming back. And I looked at it and I thought, that is really wonky. That is just lopsided. I must be doing something wrong. And I sat there and I reread the pattern and I reread it. And I was like, no, this is what it says to do. Then I realized that there was one little thing I missed. 
And I've heard, you know, Chelsea and Sue said they missed it also. And I just want you guys to know you're not alone. I totally missed it. The only thing is I was luckily, I found, I figured it out right before um, ripping back would have been a problem. So I started over and it says here on row two under short rows, um, it says pearl to beginning of round. So instead of going straight into the count of another 27 stitches, you're supposed to, you know, you go this way, then you're supposed to pearl back to the beginning of the round, then go this way and put the wrap and turn over here. So I've been hearing that a lot of people are making this mistake and I just wanted to address it. So if anyone is joining this cal, you know beforehand to watch out for that. It is in the short row section here, it's row two. Okay, and it says pearl to beginning of round, right there. And if you miss that, all the short rows will be on one side. And I don't think it even really affects the sweater because Chelsea tried hers on and it looks perfect. It's beautiful. So if you made that mistake, don't sweat it, move on. But, um, you know, for someone like, for seasoned knitters to make that mistake, I thought it was worth mentioning just so that you guys are aware of it and you can see it in the pattern when you go to knit your short rows. Um, again, it's row two of the short rows, pearl to beginning of round, then start the count of how many stitches you need before you do the wrap and turn. That's it. And if you do that, the whole thing will make sense because you're gonna go back to the first wrap and turn, back to the second wrap and turn, and you'll be passing the center in the middle and it will be centered. But as I said, I made that mistake at the beginning and I'm holding this thing, which is just the collar, which is like, it's only, the collar was only like, I don't know, what, four or eight rows or something? It wasn't many rows at all, so it was really thin. I'm holding this little strip, and then all of a sudden this V was just on one side. And I was like, no, that can't be right. Is she going to make me do one on the other side and join the fabric? Like, no, right? I totally made the same mistake. So I don't want you guys to make the same mistake because tinking stinks. And, um, but that's what I did. I think I actually just started over instead of sitting there trying to figure out where I needed to start. I just ripped it out and started over. Um, but it does give you a little bit of a nice lift in the back. See, just a little lift right here. Um, and the one nice thing about this pattern, I mean, this is the first Caitlin Hunter pattern that I've knit, but what's nice about this pattern, and I'm assuming all her patterns are the same, is that she, she starts the sweater in the center back. See, it's right here. So you start knitting the sweater in the center back. And because of that, any jogs that happen in your color work, you see like there's a, you can see the jog slightly. This is the center. You can see the jog slightly. It's slight and it's in a spot no one's gonna see it. It's just brilliant, brilliant. So I'm really loving this sweater and uh, so those are my tips. And again, I'm using Machete Shop in Tula. And you can see it better here. Even my short rows were actually in a row that had a lot of the contrasting dye, so they look a little wacko, but it's gonna be under my hair, so I just don't care. But this color is Tula on her Dirty DK, which is a 75-25 nylon and wool. And this color for the crosses and for the shields are the pluses. They're pluses or crosses. They're like red cross crosses, but they look like plus signs. So the pluses and the shields are in, I can never remember this colorway. And it's my favorite, glazed pecan from Madeline Tosh. I always want to say toasted almond. It's glazed pecan. So that's, that's it. Hi. So I'm excited to split for the sleeves, and then once that happens, I think this thing is going to fly. But you guys have to check out, I, I'm in love with Chelsea and Sue, I'm just in love with them. And they did a podcast together, which was so much fun to watch them side by side. Um, I love how Chelsea did, I copied her, I'm totally shameless about that, I copied her. Um, she did a, a base color and just one color for the contrasting color work. Um, and their, their new vanilla, I think it's called their vanilla. Oh, it's gorgeous. I need to get my hands on that. Um, I really like knitting sweaters in cream colors. Most of the sweaters that I buy are cream. For some reason, I feel like a cream sweater is just a beautiful wintry thing. So 
I love that vanilla color. I need to knit a sweater out of there. They're vanilla for Legacy Fiber Arts. Um, and then Sue, I don't remember off the top of my head the colors that she did, but I think one of them was like a lime green and her sweater I think is gray. And I just remember like, for some reason I'm blanking on what it actually looks like. I'm sure that they have it all over their Instagram, but um, it's beautiful. I mean, I was looking at it the other day when they were, I was watching episode 71, I think she has it, because she forgot to bring it with her when she went to visit them, episode 72. But episode 71, she has it, and it is exquisite. It's beautiful. The colors are great. And I, I part of me is kind of kicking myself for not adding that other, you know, maroon color for the shields. I think it, but since my base color has so many colors in it, look at that. I felt like the contrasting color being one color was probably better if you're going to use a variegated yarn as your base. I think that you need to decide what you're using variegateds for and what you're using solids for because with color work you want to be able to see the edges. I'm having some trouble because the color of my color work is in my variegated. So sometimes when I'm knitting a shield and it's gotta be like, you know, it's making the edging, I, I, I get a stitch that's the same color as the contrasting yarn and it's kind of like, it's not annoying me because I think it looks nice, but you know, you can see like right here. So that that's not like a rogue stitch, right? That's part of this color, but it looks like I did it wrong, but I didn't. It just happens to be in that yarn. Um, but overall, I think it looks great. So if you're going to do a variegated base, I would choose really flat tonals for your color work. But if you're going to use a tonal for your base, then I think you have the freedom to use a variegated yarn for your color work. I mean, you guys have to look under the hashtag on Instagram because there are really some gorgeous, gorgeous ones. And if you feel like you can't put the colors together, I mean, people are producing kits for this left and right. So trust the kit. Trust anyway, I hope you guys will join the Cal. Um, I just think it's a good way to like be excited about Rhineback, right? I'm really, really excited about Rhineback. So I think Franny's excited also. I am going to try to make her a Tecumseh um, in, I have some La Biana Me from Paris that my friend Marla got me. And um, I have the peanut butter and jelly colorway and then this dark purple that contrasts with it because she has to have a purple sweater for Rhineback. My mother made her a Sunset Highway, which is so freaking precious. <laughs> you have to see it, you guys. That's her Indie Untangled sweater. Franny has it all. I don't even have an Indie Untangled sweater, but my daughter does. Anyway, guys, please join the Cal. Show me what's all your stuff. I want to be tagged in it all. It's LYS Unity Cal. And please join. We're going to have a great time. Okay guys, I want to talk about my Millie sweater because I don't really like to just stop knitting things. Um, sometimes it happens, but when, you know, you're in the home stretch and you stop knitting something, it's usually because something's wrong and it's just pissing you off. And I really love this yarn, so I don't want to waste this yarn, but I think I made a big mistake. When I knew that I was supposed to change from a size five to a seven, and I didn't change, and I kept going. I was up here. Why did I do that? That was stupidity. So um, I don't know if I like the way it fits and if I should finish the sleeve, so I'm kind of sitting here. I'm trying to decide if I should frog it. So, you know, you guys really um, need to weigh in and help me because, you know, I... So since I did it in a five, when I did the ribbing at the bottom, I don't know, I did that in the five also, and it just looks like really loose, but maybe it'll block out. Should I just finish it? I mean, I'm so close, guys. I have half of one sleeve done, so I think maybe I'll just finish it. The, the problem is the neck. The neck is not laying right, but maybe once I block it, should I just block it the way it is right now? Can you guys give me some advice on this, please? Because I love this yarn. I don't want to waste it. Um... I probably should have changed alternated skeins because you can see that it's a little different up here than it is down here. It's a little more pronounced, the color. So I don't know, maybe frogging it wouldn't be so bad because, and I probably should have. Yeah. So maybe I will frog it. 
I love it though. It's so soft, guys. It's so soft. So if I do frog it, I will try to reuse the yarn. Um, I'll re-swift it and I'll soak it and I'll dry it as if it's just been dyed and... I don't know, guys. I don't know. Do I want to do that? I mean, this was a great knit to just take around with me because I finally memorized where all the make ones were. And so, yeah, I think I'm going to frog it, guys. Oh, my God. Who frogs a sweater this far down? No? Eh. Do you want to see what it looks like? Of course you do. Is that the back or the front? I don't know. See, guys, look what I mean with the flexi flips. Knit a sleeve with the flexi flips, and you can try it on. Mm-hmm. See, it looks weird, right? Well, my hair's in it. It, do it doesn't, like, lay right. Is this going to block out? Is that going to block out? What do you think? when I also realized I messed up on the sleeve because I was supposed to start doing decreases and I didn't do that. So I'm probably going to have to frog some of this sleeve anyway. Um, or maybe I'll leave it. I don't know, guys. Please advise. Um, I don't know if it looks wonky or if I should, maybe should have made it longer. I don't know. All I know is it doesn't look like it's supposed to because <laughs> I saw this sweater um, at a trunk show nice and it had a long time ago when I met them. And um, I don't think this is how it's supposed to look. Um, it really doesn't look that bad though, does it? See right here. It's weird, right? Look, I'm looking at, I'm looking in the, no, that doesn't lay right. But is it going to block out? Do we think it's going to block out? Guys, I'm having like a crisis. <laughs> Help me. I am close. I should just finish it, right, and block it and see how I like it. Yeah, I think I should do that. This is bothering me, though. But I could just, like, I don't know. I could gather it here and just pin it. That's cute. <laughs> That's why I'm not a model. <laughs> um, I don't know, guys. If you've knit the Millie, I'd like to hear about it. Um, obviously, you didn't do the crap that I did because who does that? Like, literally, who does that? I was at the beginning. Why didn't I just change my needles? What is wrong with me? I'm a lazy knitter. I'm lazy. That was lazy. Guys, oh my god. So now I have to have a crisis. How's my hair? <laughs> Sometimes talking to yourself alone in an attic while your cute puppy sleeps next to you, it just makes you weird, right? I feel weird. I feel weird that I'm getting used to it. Anyway, finish it, right? Yeah, I should totally finish it. Okay, thank you. All right, so when I was on the plane going to um, California, I wanted to sleep, obviously, but um, it was a very early flight. It was about 9 a.m., 9, 9 a.m., and uh, which was really nice because it's about five or six hours, and I got there, and it was noon. And that was just a really nice time, except it took so long to rent the friggin' car. Anyway, that's why we have knitting, because knitters don't mind waiting in line, and we don't mind lots of time traveling, right, and waiting in airports, because we have this. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know if they were going to let me take my needles for my Tecumseh, and I was only going for 48 hours, so I kind of left that home. And I took um, my Thunderstorm toque. Is it toque? Because everyone's been correcting me because I said toke. Guys, I'm an American. <laughs> the thunderstorm toke. Does it sound weird when I say it? Because I'm not Canadian. Does it sound weird? Yeah. Anyway, this hat. Um, <laughs> it's beautiful. And I showed it last week. And I really want to make it. Um, I wanted to make it for Indie Untangled. But I really cannot decide on a yarn. So... I picked two yarns and I took them with me because I figured they would never take yarn away from me in an airport. If they take my needles, they take my needles. I'm just knitting swatches, right? Great time to swatch when you're, when you're traveling because you don't have to pay attention to a pattern and you just, if they take your needles, they take your needles. Continue on with pencils. So I have two that I was trying and I showed them to you guys last week. This is Alex Creates, um... I can't remember the colorway right now. God, why do I do that? 
I cannot remember the name. I'm sorry. Anyway, I'll put it in the down bar. How beautiful is that caked up though? So sometimes, you know, you love a cake or you love a skein, but does it knit up as beautiful? And the truth is, yes. Alex Creates has not disappointed me yet. So this is my half of my swatch. Look at that, guys. Look at that. I only knit half a swatch because I actually don't knit that much when I travel, which is another reason that I don't want to bring <laughs> that I don't want to bring big projects with me. Um, when we were in Edinburgh, everyone was knitting away, and I was just kind of like I brought my big fringe shawl, and it just took up so much room in my luggage, and I knit two rows while I was there. So you know, I guess it's because. For me, when I'm traveling, I kind of want to soak everything in, you know? I mean, like, if you're sitting in your hotel room at night and everyone's sleeping, great time to knit. But if you're out and about, even in, like, an airport, I enjoyed Amsterdam Airport so much. So we were there in the middle of the night. We went into the little tchotchke stores. Um, so I just didn't knit a lot. And my friends are committed knitters, and they did a lot, but I did not. Anyway, that was a tangent. Um, so when I was traveling, I was kind of like... Do I really want to bring a project? No. So I'm just going to swatch. I think this is beautiful. And I really, really love this colorway. And I have two skeins of it on DK. Um, I like it because it's soft, but not so soft that you, like, feel it's going to pill. Like, this is a really, really good yarn. Um, it's 100% superwash. Again, Alex Creates. If you don't have any Alex Creates, you need to get some. Get on his website right now. I think it's alexcreates.us. Um, and I just love the colorway. So, but I just don't think it's right for this hat. And that's because this hat has so many baubles and, um, it's got so much interest that I feel like this colorway may be too busy. So I'm going to finish this swatch. Maybe I'll give it to Alex if he wants it for, you know, to show people or, um, I'll keep it as a little pot holder. <laughs> Um, so my next swatch is going to be out of this machete shop and I don't remember the colorway of this either but you know what it doesn't matter because this is one of her one-offs I think it's called mommy kisses um it's got this really beautiful light light hue to it this light pink hue and um I'm gonna try it in this but I think this might also be too busy so I have some neighborhood fiber work fiber company neighborhood fiber company you know in Baltimore I'm dying to go to that place. I'm going to make a beeline for their booth at Rhinebeck and just that's all I'm buying. That and maybe a little bit of Miss Babs. But um, yeah, so Neighborhood Fiber Company, I got in a yarn box and it's worsted. And I don't know, does this take, this takes DK. Well, I'll just do the smaller size. I was going to do the smaller size anyway, so I don't know. Maybe I'll order more. Um, the Neighborhood Fiber Company they have this worsted weight. It's like a baby. It's like, I don't know how many yards it is, but it's humongous. And I love the yarn. It came in a yarn box just randomly um, when I was subscribing to yarn box and I've been dying to figure out what to use it on. So I was thinking maybe I'd use that on this because it's this beautiful tonal and it goes from like deep reds to tomato reds and back. Um, but again, that's that's worsted, so I'll have to swatch and see. I am gonna swatch. I'm gonna swatch it all. I love this, so I don't know. I I'm kind of in the mood to make a hat. I don't know. I like to have a little project on my needles while I'm doing a big project. So since I'm doing the Tecumseh, I have to have something little. And I finished that cowl, the glacial park glacier park cowl. So I'm just looking to cast on something tiny to like you know take with me when I'm going to a baby shower and I just don't care what they're opening. <laughs> um, you guys don't care either. You don't care. Unless it's something knitted, right? Yeah. I've seen one stroller, seen them all. Unless they get a bugaboo, then you're like, whoa, who bought that? But you know, not many people I know have bugaboos. So, but I was watching again, Chelsea and Sue last night. I have Chelsea and Sue on the brain. Can you tell? Um, and Sue cast on a sock head hat. And I made one. I made one for my husband and I really, really loved making it. It was, I think it's knit on a size two and it's, so it's a really tight, small knit and you do it with sock yarn and, um, but it's a really satisfying knit. You do the ribbing and then it's just total, uh, it was in, in knitting in the round. Is it garter or stockinette? 
because you're knitting every round, but it looks like you're knitting and purling. So what is it in the round? What is it? Anyway, it's just flat knit stitch, okay? So you're just knitting for the rest of the time that you're doing the hat until you do the decreases, which is just a couple of K2 togs here and there. It's the best pattern, guys. Sockhead hat. But I was kind of like, hmm, maybe I could stripe one because I'm all into stripes now. And I have these kits from Machete Shop that I showed you a while ago. And I went to her um, trunk show in Winterberry's Yarn. And I have a little um, video, if you didn't see it, take a look. Winterberry's Yarn is the cutest little yarn store. Um, they have Machete Shop. They just got Hedgehog in. So they're moving on up, guys. Check them out. Um, but I loved this kit. And it's a 75-25 um, superwash merino and nylon. It's a four-ply fingering. Her four-ply fingering is a nice round um, yarn. It's really, it has a nice, nice definition to it. I don't know if you can see it through this. Can you see it? And so I have two of these sock sets and, well, I'm sorry, I'm not giving the one away. I'm sorry, I'm keeping them. But I thought, I like to look at it as a set sometimes. Do you ever do that? You get yarn and you just like to look at it. Um, it's who we are, guys. You're not alone, okay? But I thought a striped sock head hat in this would be so much fun. So I think that I might be doing that while I'm interviewing yarn for my thunderstorm toque. Toque. <laughs> Is that right? Am I doing it right? Um, but the sock head hat. So I think this needs to happen. So I'm going to cake these up into cupcakes because they're mini skeins. So they're cupcakes. So if anyone wants to join me in, in casting on a sock head hat, please do. Let's stripe the crap out of it. So machete shop, you guys know I'm in love with Brittany from machete shop, right? I'm going to be going out to her farm soon. Uh, I want to meet her chickens and her horse and I want to bring Franny. Apparently she has some off the hook vegetable garden that like puts mine to shame. So I really want to see that. Brittany, we, did, we need to set a date for this. Um, but I just want to tell you guys about something she's doing right now. It's in her shop. It's the 12 eggs of Christmas. She has one of her chickens in a sweater, guys. She knit a sweater for her chicken. This girl is so awesome. I love her to death. Um, she's doing, it's like an advent calendar. I didn't read all of the information. I just ordered it because I know that I never am disappointed by anything I order from her. And so I just grabbed it. But um, I believe it's 12 mini skeins and one full skein. And it's in her simple sock base, which is the um, superwash and nylon. And it's a 7525 and it knits up so well, guys. It's wonderful. So please hop over to macheteshop.com. I don't know how many kits she has left. I think she's taking pre-orders. So go to it and get it. This is what her mini skeins look like, guys. This is what they look like. Look how gorgeous they are. These are gorgeous. They are more than Gemma Darling approved. They are Gemma Darling drool worthy, <laughs> okay? And I am a yarn connoisseur. You guys are all knitters. I'm a yarn connoisseur and this is good stuff. So please hop over to her website and support her little family farm. And um, yeah, I love Brittany. I love her and her stuff's good. It's good. Okay, you guys are wondering, what did I buy in the past couple weeks? Because I don't stop buying stuff, and I did not disappoint. So let's start out with these pins that I got. Um, this is not necessarily a knitting pin store, but I did stumble across it because um, she has this line called Flapper Doodle, and I love the flappers that she draws, and she made a pin set with a flapper here and a chain so the flapper's knitting, and then there's a knitting ball. And so I bought this a long time ago, um, but it's Kate Gabriel. And um, it's kategabriel.com. And so I ordered this because I really, really love it. It says, this dress has pockets. Who else loves dresses with pockets? If it has pockets, I don't even have to like the dress. I buy it. So I thought this was really apropos for me. Um, look how cute that is. And I really like her pins. They're very colorful. Um, I even tried to make them put 
pockets in my wedding dress and they couldn't do it because it was too sheer and I was so sad. I just wanted my cell phone and a lipstick. Wedding dresses should have pockets, people. I did try on a wedding dress that had pockets and I loved it, but it was a very plain dress and I could see that my mother was not like super into it. She wanted me to wear the Swiss dot one and I loved the dress that I bought, but I, the other one just fit me like a glove. Why can't we be brides more than once? Like marry the same guy. I love my husband. I don't want to marry someone else, but I would love to buy more dresses. <laughs> and my friend whose wedding I went to last week, she had a Vera. Oh my God. It was gorgeous. I'm going to insert a picture, even though you don't know her and you don't care, but she looked fantastic. Anyway, the second pin that I bought from Kate Gabriel is going out to Christina from Chelsea Yarns. You should be getting this in a couple days. I'm going to put it in the mail tomorrow. Live every week like it's shark week. I'm talking to you, Christina. <laughs> now, I should have bought two of these because my little sister, who's only 18 months younger than me, so she is not little, um, but she will always be my little sister, is obsessed with sharks. And she's been obsessed with sharks and so, since she was probably about six years old. Um, we used to go to Hilton Head Island in the summer and my mother and I were in a supermarket. They had a Piggly Wiggly and we saw a shark blow up that she could ride in the ocean and we brought it home all blown up with its head sticking out of the Buick because she loves sharks and I, we thought she would love it and she did. Um, so she's been making me watch Shark Week for about 30 years now. <laughs> I think that's how, since it started, didn't it start back then? So it was like 25 or 30 years we've been watching it. Um, but Christina kept posting that she watched Shark Week all the time until she was seeing repeats. That's how much she watched it. So uh, Christina, I was like, I saw this pin and if you don't have it, I'm sending it to you. You're welcome. <laughs> so that is my haul from Kate Gabriel. Um, you guys have to go online and see her stuff because she's very retro and she shows her room. Everything's pink and with flowers all over and it's really fantastic. And I just, I love ordering stuff from her. I do. Um, when I was at VKL last year, uh, well this year, 2018 in January, I missed the one booth that I really wanted to go to. And that was junk yarn with Shelly can. And I just, I think I even walked straight past it. And everyone was talking about the little taxi that they got in yellow because, you know, New York City cabs are yellow. I have pins of yellow cabs that I bought in New York City and I gave out in Edinburgh. So I wish I had gotten that pin and I didn't um, because I blew through the booth. I blew past the booth. And so I actually look at her website a lot and I really, really love it. I love the stuff she designs. Um, at Indie Untangled last year, the Lemonade Shop had the Yarn Snob pin, and I loved that rendition of Yarn Snob. I love the logo. So this week I went on her website and I ordered two t-shirts, the Yarn Snob t-shirts. Um, let me crinkle while I'm not talking. Cause I saw Christina wearing one of these on the Chelsea Pearls podcast. And I was like, I need this shirt. I need it. So it's cause it's so retro and guys, it's like, I, you can't even see the fabric. It's got, it's so, so soft and sheer. It's not like a thick t-shirt that washes and then feels like a Brillo pad. Like this is nice. So I ordered two, I ordered a medium and a large because sometimes things shrink. Um, so I'm going to wash them up and see which one fits better. And then, you know, um, if any of them are way too big, I'll give it to my mommy. <laughs> but this is my yarn snob tea. I ordered this. I ordered the pack of four stickers with the yarn snob logo because my husband is a coder and they put stickers all over their computers. So I'm starting to collect stickers, guys. I have, you know, I have my lemonade shop one. I have my machete shop. This is the old logo. She did rebrand it. So I'm going to start collecting them and I'm going to peel all his stickers off my computer and I'm going to put all my knitting stickers on it. So send me stickers. Um, and I also ordered this because I really love this pin. And this is of course from Harry Potter. Um, the wand chooses the wizard. But what I think is really sharp about what Shelly did is see how this one is a needle. Well, I got this because I'm starting to sew and I wanted a sewing pin. 
but she also has a knitting needle and she also has a crochet hook. So you can choose whatever you love to do is your wand and you can choose it. And she ca it comes in three variations. And I thought that was really, really smart of her. So I'm really excited with all the swag that I got from Shelly Can. Uh, I'm sure I'll be ordering from her again because I'm a shopaholic and a knitaholic and she puts all of that together. So there you go. Guys, I got my tote from the Knitting Garage. This is for Rhinebeck 2018. It is the Knitting Garage. Um, I think it's a Knitting Garage exclusive. I think she came up with it. It says on top, Knitting Garage. Nope, it doesn't say that. It says autographs. I can't read. Um, it says autographs. It's got the little Knitting Garage logo right there. And then it comes with a Sharpie attached to it by this really cool ring. And so while you're at bleh, while you're at Rhinebeck, you guys can get autographs from either your favorite podcasters or even just your friends. And um, it's got you know it says Rhinebeck, New York, 2018. And this is a humongous bag, guys. Look at this. It's huge, and I cannot wait to fill it. I cannot wait to fill it. I can't wait to visit the knitting garage again. Um, if you guys go to Rhinebeck just to go to the fairgrounds, you're really missing out. Downtown Rhinebeck is so cute. Um, Christy took me last summer to this place called Bread Alone. It's kind of like a Panera, but a little fancier. And you can sit in the back and there's table service. And I got for six bucks, I think it was six dollars, six or eight dollars. I got a huge piece, it was humongous, of avocado toast. And it's like avocados and tomatoes and onions and whatever they put on it, it is the best thing. So whenever I go to Rhinebeck, which is unfortunately not too often, um, I kind of make a beeline for bread alone and I get my avocado toast. Does not disappoint. So if you guys are in, you know, go to Rhinebeck a day early if you can, you know, if you're able to. Um... All the hotels would probably have places to stay on Thursday night because I don't think so many people come Thursday night. I go Thursday. Um, and then we walk around Old Town Rhinebeck, like downtown Rhinebeck, and right in that little area right there is the knitting garage. It's, it's in the back of Stickles. And Stickles is this old 5 and 10, I think. I think that's what it is. It has so much stuff and... It's like something right out of the 50s. My mom, every time we go in there, my mom's like, oh my God, this is what it looked like in the store that I worked in. We love going in there. It's got, it's got so much stuff. It's got candy and patterns. And if you go into the knitting garage in the back, it's got, she has good stuff, Leah. She has really, really good stuff. So please don't miss the knitting garage. Um, but order your autographs tote now on knittinggarage.com because they're not gonna last forever. And I don't know if she's even going to have any left by the time Rhinebeck comes around. Who knows? So, Rhinebeck 2018, guys. It's coming. Are you excited? I'm so excited. Can you tell? I'm tired now. <laughs> so, I don't really have much else to tell you guys. I think that's it. Um, I think that was a lot, though, right? Considering I didn't do that much knitting. Um, I didn't put the pins on the canvas yet. Uh, I got some tips from people that said not to use just a fabric to use a heavy canvas because otherwise the pins will make it sag. So I might put the canv canvas on um, a cutout of cardboard and pin it through the cardboard when I put it in those hoops that I was talking about last week. So thank you for all of your suggestions on that. I wouldn't have even thought about it sagging. And so that was really a wonderful tip. Thank you. Hey, my mom um, and I, I, I've been trying to vlog. I, I wanted to vlog because remember my original plan for this channel was two podcasts a month and four vlogs and I have not even had the chance to vlog. I do have one coming up soon from uh, when we went to sew at Urban Society. I just haven't been editing lately and so it's been sitting there waiting and I'm, I'm sorry. Um, that one will be coming soon because I want you guys to see that store Urban Society in Westfield, New Jersey. It's fantastic. But the other day I was like, oh, um, my husband was working from home. So my mom and I took Franny and we were like, let's go to some fabric stores. And, you know, we didn't want to go to Joanne Fabrics just because we wanted to kind of see some independent fabric stores if there were any. And there really aren't that many guys. I mean, a lot of them are quilting centric. So if you're a quilter, it's wonderful. But we were looking for like a rayon, like a light rayon, like these dresses. They're so light. And we just wanted to make some some dresses and some skirts um you know like i really want to make this dress right here 
you know, I like to be a boho chic mommy in the summer. And I know it's August already, but it was hot well through October last year. So I'm not even abandoning my summer clothes anytime soon. And I thought that making that would be really fun in a nice light rayon. I was going to pick two fabrics that complement one another. And um, I thought it would be really nice. But there is no rayon to be found anywhere. The, a lot of the stores that we tried to go to... Um, we would get there, and it was just an empty store. So unfortunately, uh, these bigger stores are starting to swallow the small fabric stores. If you know of any small family-owned fabric stores, um, please let me know. I would love to go to some of them. I've been trying very hard not to go to Joanne, even though I like Joanne fabrics. I have nothing against Joanne fabrics. I just... You know, when it comes to crafting, I like to support small businesses. Um, but Fabric.com had all of the Rifle Paper Company uh, rayon, so I ordered some. I'm going to order some of that and then get sewing because as much as I want to keep hunting for the fabric stores, I kind of want to sew a little bit more. But um, suggestions are really welcome. So thank you. Guys, I think that's it from my end. Uh, I really don't have much else to tell you. Things have been really good here. We're enjoying our summer. It's a little hot. Um, I have yet to take Franny to the town pool, which is my fault, but it has been 100 degrees outside. Um, my, my garden is doing really well, but we've been eating out of it a lot. A lot of cucumbers, a lot of eggplant, a lot of eggplant parm. Um, and I'm really enjoying the gardening. So if you guys didn't do it this year, I would totally recommend trying it for next year. Um, and now is a really good time to buy your supplies if you're looking to do raised bed planters because they are on sale at this time of year. So I think I bought a couple from Wayfair. I think that um, Crate and Barrel has some. Uh, even William Sonoma has some. But um, yeah, buy them this year and at the end of the season because usually they're about 50% off, which they're a lot of money. Um, if you have a nice plot of land that gets sun all day, you're super lucky. I just don't. So but it's been growing, they've been growing great. The raised bed planters I got were nine inches deep. I wish it was deeper, but um, the stuff is growing great. It really is. It's rooting and it's wonderful and I'm enjoying eating out of it. And even my husband's like, I'm really proud of you. Like you wanted to grow stuff and you did. And I did. So that's all from my end, guys. I want to hear from you. Please comment. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe because once we hit our milestones, we do giveaways. And um, that's it from my end, guys. So I hope you have a wonderful August. I will see you in a couple weeks. Happy knitting. Happy crafting. And just be happy. Bye, guys. Besides going to LA, I came back, we're having a small edition put on the house. And when I say small edition, I mean like it's eight by eight. It's tiny. But I live in a really, really old house, and which I love. I love old houses, except for the fact that there's no closet space. But hey, I've got this attic, right? So um, we're having this tiny edition put on the house that I have like been begging my husband for because I just want a bathroom on the main floor. If you guys live in a bathroom and if you live in a bathroom. If you live in a house without a bathroom on the main floor, you completely understand where I'm coming from. I have a small child and a dog that is my co-host right now. He's passed out. Um, he just ran me all over the neighborhood. He ran like as if he was two years old. He is not. He's 12 and he ran. But um, he cries if I leave the floor that he's on. So if I'm on the main floor and I go up to the bedrooms to go to the restroom, I hear him going, so I take him with me and then I have to take Franny with me and then everyone is in the bathroom with me and hashtag mom life I'm sure you guys understand this but I just wanted a restroom on that same floor I mean I don't know if we're gonna have another kid or not but going upstairs to the restroom when you were pregnant every 10 minutes was awful I mean there are much worse things in life so I'm really not gonna complain but it was not a good time so um, we also have a lot of um, my husband's mother's friends that we want to invite to the house, and some of them are not so good with stairs. So how are they supposed to go to the bathroom? So I did 
kind of push for this. I really, really wanted a bathroom and that was a 10 minute ramble about my bathroom. But I'm kind of excited. I'm really, really excited. <laughs> this is when you know you've hit middle age, when you're excited about a bathroom. Mm -hmm. I'm also getting a little bit of a butler's pantry to put my four crock pots in. I have four crock pots. Have I ever used any of them? No. Do I need to? Yes. Send crock pot recipes, please. 